Things that I've learned in one year of home ownership. Well, the day I moved in, I learned that someone died here. Hello you guys, what's up? It's Monica and I am back to give you guys a home update. Last week I made a video of my official house tour. All fun and games with the decorating, but now let's get adult for a minute. I wanted to check in with you guys about home ownership for the last year, how my house is appreciated, how much equity I now have, things that I didn't expect, and I'm actually now going through the home buying process again for a house in California that's gonna be a rental. So there's even more things that I've learned that I want to share with you guys. So let's hop into this. Number one, the first thing that I really didn't expect is honestly, it kind of still feels like renting, at least for me. I have a townhouse and so there's not like some yard you keep up with. It doesn't feel like I own a bunch of land that I can do things with. It's just, you know, it feels like a townhouse that I've rented before. I think the main reason right now is because, you know, come the end of the month, I still dread paying my mortgage because so much of it still goes to interest. Right now my mortgage, you guys know, is $4,400 and $2,600 of that goes to interest, just like right back to the bank. And I think another $900 goes to escrow. And so it's still throwing away so much money. And that way it honestly still feels like renting. I don't feel like that more sense of pride of like, look at all this equity I'm earning because it doesn't feel like that much. It feels like such a slow process. And I'll get more into that later on in the video. But that was the first thing that kind of surprised me. I'm like, I don't know, how am I supposed to feel like, I don't feel like an owner. Number two, okay, so growing up, you know, I've had the luxury of like, my parents have owned their house. They've been homeowners and they were always really good friends with their neighbors, you know, everyone took care of the community. And when I rented with apartments and townhouses, everyone comes and goes so much, no one ever really cared to get to know their neighbors, at least in my experience, maybe it's different for you. But for me, it was just like in apartments, like people didn't really care to get to know each other that much. So I was so so excited with buying a house to get to know my neighbors and like be a good neighbor and watch out for the neighborhood and all this stuff and let me tell you didn't happen. I just expected with owning a house, it would feel different and I would get respect from my neighbors and we would have adult conversations and that did not happen, guys. That really didn't. I moved in and my neighbors, I think, immediately judged me for being young looking and they just didn't like me right off the bat and they don't like my roommates that moved in either and they never talked to me. They like honestly give me and my roommates all like dirty looks when we hadn't even done anything. They just totally judged a book by its cover and went like, what are these young people doing here? Another one isn't around much, but one day came and knocked on my door. I was like, oh my God, this is my neighbor. Cool, like, hi. And rather than being like, oh, hi, I'm your neighbor. I'm so and so nice to meet you. What's your name? Like a normal human. This guy was just like, hi, my name is this and I do this and I live next door and I think you should move that light post. They just so clearly like don't care about getting to know you at all. I think it's a mixture of people in Seattle are awkward and don't don't really talk to each other. I just expected it to be so different and I was so ready to be like a good neighbor, but you know what? It could be so much worse. I'm not, I shouldn't even complain. I just expected differently. The next thing that I didn't expect was how many homes seriously go for sale every year? Before I bought my house, I was so afraid, you know, of like FOMO, of not getting the house and what would I do? Like nothing else is gonna come up. And you know, I was very lucky that I did get this house on the first try and it's great, but but you know, then I moved in and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. Like, I bet you nothing else is gonna sell like anytime soon. Like, good thing I got in here. No, 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 not the case at all. Throughout this year, I was so shocked. Every time I went outside, I swear to you, I saw a for sale sign on my street. So many houses go for sale all the time in all different areas. So that really taught me like, you don't need to have FOMO even about a specific street that you want to live on. Because so like one street will still have five or six houses that'll go up for sale within the year. If you don't get the one house on your dream street, there'll be five others. I have it zoomed in on my street and I'm just gonna move it to sold with in the last year and see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
eight houses sold this year just on my block. There's really no reason for you to feel like you're missing out on your dream house in that perfect location because I promise you, promise, 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 one of the biggest things I learned, so many houses will still go for sale. Next thing that I did not expect was how easy and simple it is to get roommates or a tenant. As long as you're pricing your house right and within the market value, which is not hard to find out. Like literally, I'm not a genius, okay? I just analyzed it by looking at other townhouses near me and how much they were going for. And I was like, well, that's how much I could get then. You know, I kind of had this goal. I was like, I'm gonna get this townhouse. I'm gonna get roommates. I'm not gonna be responsible for all the mortgage. And that's gonna be that. But even when I moved in, I, I really deep down was like, but am I actually gonna do it? Is it gonna be really hard to do? I don't know, I've never done this. But you guys, it was so easy easy. So many people are always looking for housing. So it's really not that hard as long as you have your thing priced right. So for me, my house, the room downstairs is $950 a month and the room upstairs is $1,150 a month. I posted on Facebook marketplace and found people that agreed to within a few days. And then as far as the process of like a lease and stuff, I just looked up Washington lease agreement. There was a website called rocketlawyer.com. I made like a subscription for just the one month and got a lease agreement, had them sign it. You fill in the blank a couple things. It's literally so easy. That was it. It was so simple. Like they make it so easy these days with the internet. Seriously, it's not hard. You know when you move into an apartment or a townhouse and they get it all cleaned up for you. Like they get it nice and professional and everything spick and span and good to go. I thought, you know, with moving into a house, it'd be the same way. But if anything, it is the opposite. When you buy a house, you're just kind of getting it as is. They might clean it up a bit, but it, it's not like the service of moving into a new apartment. I was kind of surprised like when I moved in, you know, yes, the house looked pretty clean during the open house and everything. But then when I moved in and I was like starting to put dishes in the cabinet, I realized the cabinets were really dirty. Like I had to go through and scrub everything. They don't get some cleaning service to deep clean everything for you before you move into your new house. There's no leasing office agent coordinating that. And so it really is is kind of up to you how you're gonna clean it and feel comfortable moving in and I don't know why I expected it to just be all like perfect. There's funny things that you learn when you move in such as that and also the day I moved in I learned after just a brief conversation with my neighbors they were like oh yeah we're so glad you're moving in and this isn't gonna be an Airbnb anymore and that's when I learned it was an Airbnb before which I kind of like didn't like knowing that I, I kind of wish I didn't know because you know Airbnbs, people just trash them and they don't treat them kindly. And I didn't like knowing that it kind of grossed me out. That's why I deep cleaned my house so much right before I moved in. Cause I was like, I don't know how many people have been in here and what they've done. And there were weird quirks. Like that's when I realized in my bathroom, there's like two mirrors kind of hotel style. Cause it was an Airbnb. There's also like a really shitty quality hair dryer just connected to the wall, like a hotel. I need to get that out, but that's, also because it was an Airbnb. And um, my closet came with a safe because it was an Airbnb. But then it gets better because the other thing that I learned, the day I moved in, I picked up this piece of paper that was from the open house and it was about the first owner. And it was this guy who was kind of like famous for the Seattle area, I guess. And so I Googled his name and the only articles that came up were about how he died. And I was like, dang, that sucks he died. That's really sad. And so I clicked on one of the articles and it read like, so-and-so died on this day in his home. And it said the neighborhood that my house is in. So he died in the house and the articles let me know that. <laughs> I thought they had to disclose that stuff, but I think actually you only have to if it's been within a couple years or something. Look, if I knew that someone died in the house, would I have not bought it? No, I would not have bought it. Are you kidding? No, I'm kidding. I obviously still would have bought it. Death happens, it's natural, it's okay, it's fine. But it was super weird to learn. Like no one told me. I learned it the day I moved in. It made me feel like kind of weird. Like I slept with one eye open that night, but you know, no hauntings have happened yet. So I think we're in the clear. I think my ghost likes me. Hopefully, sometimes I play his music he produced just to keep him happy. Just don't expect when you buy your house it to be in this like perfect condition like when you move into an apartment because 
it won't be. And the last thing that I learned that I really didn't expect, no one told me that I think you might want to prepare for if you're looking into buying houses, not everyone is going to be happy for you. And that really sucks because it's such an exciting thing, buying a house, you're saving up a lot of money, you worked hard for it. I, I'm sure it's a big accomplishment. That's how it felt for me. And I was excited to share it with my friends and family, but I could tell when certain people like weren't really happy for me. And I don't want to go out and be like, they were jealous, but I think everyone's in a different place in their lives, obviously, especially me being able to buy this house at a young age and running around being like, I bought a house, I'm so excited. It probably made any of my other friends that weren't feeling very secure in their jobs or their finances or anything. It just probably made them feel even worse about it, which totally makes sense. And so that's something to like be sensitive. Don't just be like, I bought a house. Whoa, everyone come over. Cause some people, it might take them a little bit to warm up to it because they, they might be like a little bit jealous or a little bit insecure that they can't do that yet, you know? And that's totally normal and natural too. I wish that wasn't the case. And this is something I actually talked to my realtor about too. And he said he's had clients say the same thing that they were surprised that some of their friends or family like weren't happy for them or like you could tell they they just didn't want to hear about it you know and it totally yeah it makes sense but it's something to prepare for like not everyone is gonna be as ecstatic as you are and want to celebrate your accomplishment because they're dealing with their own shit basically so those are all of the unexpected things that I learned within this first year. Now I wanna get into the financial side of things to wrap up this video. And that's probably what you're here for. Smash this like button if you're nosy and that's why you came. YouTube algorithm, yeah, I don't know. Quick refresher for you guys. I bought my house for $770,000. It is a townhouse in Seattle. It's expensive, I know. And if you live in Canada, you're probably kicking yourself even harder because it's even more expensive there. And if you live in Texas, you're probably laughing at all of us here in the Northwest because it's cheaper there. It is what it is. And on my house, I put 10% down. So $77,000 immediately into equity on the house. The total that I paid with closing costs was $87,000. So my closing costs were around like $10,000-ish and that was just for all the lender fees and all that stuff. My first mortgage payment was in December and $914 went to principal, $2,600 went to interest, and $900 went to escrow. And after my down payment, my loan started at $694,900 which is really scary to see. It's a lot of money. <laughs> no, it's actually not that scary. And now 11 months later, I'm down to $684,800. So I put in $10,000 in equity. Over this first year, it's only $900 a month going towards it. So it was projected at this point, I'd be around $8,000. But in the beginning, there were a couple months where I would throw in it an extra $500 to principal, you know, just cause what the hell, why not? Like I need to build to the 20% anyway. So I, I would just do that. And so, now I'm a little bit ahead, I'm at $10,000 instead of $8,000, but I honestly really wish I would have done that every month so I'd be even more ahead. Like I'm mad at myself for not doing that and um, I have to pay my mortgage in a couple days. So I think I'm gonna start doing that again. So if we take my $77,000 from the down payment and my $10,000 in equity that I've built in payments over this year, I am at $87,000 in equity. But here is where things actually get pretty interesting. My lender sends me like, if you own a house, you probably get this automated email that sends like what your estimated home value is worth based on things that sold around your area. And once a month you get one of these and I've seen it go from 770 up to 790. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then it hit 800,000. I was like, hey, that's really cool. And you know, I don't, I, I try not to think too hard about this number because obviously it could change a lot, but I think it'd be fun to share with you guys how much it has appreciated this year, even though it's not guaranteed money. So my estimate for August, 2020 is actually that my house is worth $835,000, which is pretty crazy to think I bought it for $770,000 and it's appreciated $65,000 in a year. My $77,000 investment has appreciated an extra $65,000. Like, 
obviously not guaranteed and if I ever go to sell there will also be you know brokerage fees and things like that although I kind of want to become a real estate agent and sell my house myself I don't know guys what do you think so this website that projected my home value it says you know if I were to sell my house tomorrow I would walk away with hundred and fifty thousand dollars again disclaimer lots of fees so it wouldn't really be that much but it's still way better than putting $77,000 in a bank account and just letting it sit and some of you guys might be like well how do you know that home value is like actually legit well actually you guys just a couple months ago my literal next door neighbor townhouse like that's attached to me they sold theirs and they sold theirs for the $830,000 and theirs was just like mine so if that's not evidence I don't know what is, right? So that's pretty cool. I will say home ownership in the process, I mean, there is some pride that comes with it. Like I feel secure in having this. No one can take me away from this house. No one can evict me. The bank could foreclose me, but probably not gonna happen. And it's a really cool thing. And I'm really thankful that I was able to get into this house. And the home buying process is so confusing and frustrating and all those things. And honestly, that's why recently I have thought about potentially becoming a real estate agent or just getting my license and maybe buying and selling some houses because it's something that I am passionate about. I love houses. I'm obsessed with the Seattle market and the Palm Springs market, but the Seattle market I'm obsessed with and I really like the idea of also being able to help other people get into their house So I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I would love to know what you guys I don't know I'm sure I have real estate agent viewers out there And so like if any of you guys are and if you have like any advice for me or if you think I should if you think I shouldn't I would love if you'd email me like let me know what you think or just like let me know in the comments you guys because I don't know it's something I've thought about about. That's it. I'm so happy with my house. I'm glad you guys have enjoyed this journey with me And if you haven't seen my house tour definitely check that out I'll have that linked below and like I said in the beginning I'm literally going through the home buying process again in Palm Springs I put an offer in on a house the other day So if you guys want to see that vlog I'll have that linked below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more kind of real estate style videos I have stuff about Seattle housing. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Just your totally average Sunday morning super chill just casually putting an offer in on a house so I know I was gonna wait with buying a Palm Springs house but 